Hello again everybody, this is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming Miniature video. And in this one we are going to be working on Hail Caesars, Caesars Legions armed with Gladius. Right? As in my first video, I just did an open boxing and uh, first impression review. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to assemble these and probably uh, prime them. And then in the next video we'll start painting them. Okay, so in this video we're going to go ahead and snip them and get them glued on to some popsicle sticks. What I do is I have these jumbo popsicle sticks that I plan to glue like four figures per popsicle stick. So basically each one of these would represent one of the bases that I'm going to use uh, to mount these guys into. Uh, but they're all going to be pretty much painted exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter. I could put... You know, like on this one in the past, I put like eight American War of Independence guys on a base. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a little bit less crowded. I'm gonna use six popsicle sticks for my six sprues right here. But that's one of the last things I do. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut out all the pieces that I need, and primarily it's going to be, uh, you know, bodies, heads, stuff like that. Right? All right. So I recommend you using uh, snippers, if you don't already have snippers, rec I recommend getting them. Uh, hobby snippers, you can get them from GW, you can get them from Army Painter. I got these from Squadron. It was, it's a model company. Um, just depends, you know. And I have another, I got like a red pair, and this one has been with me for a while, and it's pretty darn good. I think you get these, at, I think you can get little, little snippers at, uh, any hardware store as well. Okay, so let me let me snip these out. Now I don't know if you've used snippers before, but they usually have like a flat side and then a beveled side to reach down in there and snip. So take the flat side of your snipper and you put it up against whatever you want to preserve. Like I want to preserve the miniature and not so much the sprue, obviously. So I put it lay it flat up against that base of the figure right it's not like this not like that not like this or crooked or whatever not left and right just lay it flat and snip it Boop. and then I do it again Boop. and then I do it again up here now we got a head joint there got a I lay this flat against the head joint snip okay so when you take it off now you've got pretty much a flush flat piece right there because your snipper took care of it but I'm still going to go over it with my knife just to... Well, I don't really have anything available. Just to make it lay flat. And I look at the top. Then I look closely at the model and I see if there's any sprue lines. And there are. I drag my blade across those sprue lines to get rid of any imperfections in the molding process. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of them. It looks like there was only that one on that leg. Oop, under his hand, under his arm. Now, this is me just being anal because once you put that shield on there, you're never going to see this through line. All right, let me get the bodies out, and then I'll be right back. All right, so we got all the 24 uh, guys cut out. Now what I need to do is maybe pick out some heads and some arms and figure out which way... Which way I want to, what I want to do with those arms. Um, they do give you some slings and some gladius arms. I think I'm just going to go straight gladius, 100% uh, gladius. I don't think I'm going to uh, do any slingers. That just doesn't make sense to me because I don't think the Roman legion had slings. And if they did, I can always do that later, like in one of my future boxes. Because you know I'm going to be getting three boxes to make, or two box, wait, two boxes to make three units. Yep. Okay, so let me cut these slings out, or the, uh, the gladius arms, and I'll be right back. All right, now that I got the sword arms cut out, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and glue them into the bases uh, into the, we're going to glue them onto the bodies and just looking at the box 
it looks like they're all in a forward thrusting style pose and you don't have to do that you can have it raised or you know where they can be a, but traditionally the Roman soldier would fight by thrusting with his gladius um, there was very little hacking but uh, but I could see maybe the leader holding it upright uh, so that um, you know look be in, inspirational to his troops or whatever so what I want to do is I want to take three of these guys that I plan to make my leaders and I'm going to kind of set them off to the side because that's my that's going to be my lieutenant or the uh, centurion uh, this guy's going to be probably the standard bearer 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 of good news um, I don't know maybe this guy could be the standard bearer and this guy could be the combat dude combat dude and then the other guy's got to be a musician right so hmm probably this one okay I wanted them all to be different poses because I didn't want it to look very scripted or whatever so put a little drop of the E6000 on the whoa on the shoulder joint find a good pose of a sword and glue it in place now obviously like I said I want my officer to have a raised sword so that's what we're doing here with this I put too much glue on there Luckily, I'll be able to fix that afterwards. Perfecto. Raise his arm as much as I can without it looking crazy. Okay, so that's the officer. So now I'm just going to go and drop a little bit of glue on each one of these shoulder blades. and put the swords facing forward like they're thrusting them some are thrusting overhead some are thrusting down that doesn't make, that one doesn't make sense all right now that guy's kind of thrust in I don't know, you can't, might not focus on this very well. That guy's thrusting like up and over his shield. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like anything that looks animated, you know, like, like it's a unique pose. Because that's the whole reason why you get uh, models that you have to assemble. Is so that you can put them in all these unique poses. Alright, let me go ahead and get these arms glued on and then I'll be right back. All right, now we've got to get these command gentlemen. Okay. There we go. we got to use the standard. It looks like my clippers are going to get in there, so I'm going to definitely have to use my knife to fix that. Okay, got the standard and the horn all right so we're going to trim those with the knife like i said i don't really need to trim much of that it looks like the arm looks pretty good still going to take that little piece off there that's where I was having the issue, right there, right underneath the crest. And that's fixed. All right, that looks good. What about this one? Now, I had all the swords piled up in a single pile. I kind of used my hand to shuffle them around, mix them up a little bit. Not much, just a little bit, you know, because they, they pretty much went into the pile all random. 
And then I did the same with the bodies, and then I just picked an arm, picked a body, glued them together. There was no thinking. There's no pre-planning. It was all random. So what that's going to do is it's going to make all those figures look a little bit more animated because every part of their body is random. Okay, so do I want the guy standing upright to be the bugler? I think so. And I want the guy leaning to be the artifice, the uh, artificer. Is that what they call him? Uh, okay. See, that doesn't look right. Does that look right to you? That doesn't look right to me. If I lean it up like this, I guess it would look right if he's trying to blow it off to the right. Let's try it on this guy. That looks better, actually, on the guy leaning. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so if that's going on him, if that's going on him, let's see if the standard looks good on the guy standing upright. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. That looks good. All right, so that's where we're going to do it. We're going to put the bugle on the guy that's got a little bit of a lean to him. I call it a bugle, but it's probably more like a trumpet. I'm not really a musician. This guy is. Okay, so you, I could put it where it's down low and he's just, he's done blowing it. He's not really busy. He's not planning on blowing it anytime soon. Or I could put it up high where he's planning on blowing it. Or I might even be able to position the helmet and the head so that he's actually got it close to his face. Uh, that doesn't really look it's going to be low. Like he's not in the middle of blowing it. He's just carrying it. Yeah, that looks good. Right, put a little drop of glue on the standard bearer's arm. Boop, boop, be doo. And the standard. Holding it high, representing, representing his legion or his cohort or whatever this is. This maniple is in Marion. I think they call them cohorts. In early in early Republican, I think they call them maniples. I don't know. I don't remember. Now, do I want it leaning forward like that so it looks like he's got some weight to it? Or do I want to have him tilted straight up like he's holding it high like suckers? Okay, I want it high. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's saying suckers. Okay. All right, so now I've considered actually gluing the shields on. Uh, but I've decided against that. We're not going to glue the shields on. I'm actually going to paint the shields separately. Well, let me rephrase that. I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint the inside separately. I'm going to paint the bodies of these guys separately, and then I'm going to glue the shields on, and then finish painting the outside of the shields and putting the decals on. All right, guys. So now the non-officer types have uh, these six heads, right? And they're very similar to everybody. So what I'm going to do is there's 21 of them. So I'm just going to cut 21 heads off and I'm going to try to use every single one. As soon as you get these cut off, I'll be right back. All right, we got the heads cut off. I even cut off the leader's heads. That leaves a number of heads uh, on the sprues that you can use because they give you way more heads than you need so like there's 12 I have 15 heads that I can use on other models or save them for future 
modifications or whatever. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the heads on. Now I'm going to take a look at the box and I'm going to rely on the box to give me an accurate depiction of what's supposed to be on what. And it looks like the musician is using the wolf head and the artificer or the whatever you call the, the standard bear is using the cat covered head. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to pull up and then on the painted cover, same thing. Standard bear, cat, musician, wolf. I'm going to verify that. Is it recording? Okay, good. All right, guys. Well, I did a little bit of research, um, and I found out that uh, animal pelts were ab absolutely common on the musicians and the standard bearers, but there is no, um, what am I going to say, organizational requirement or no standardization across the board because some units had wolf a lot of wolves were used a lot of wolves but some people some of the units were using cats but it could have mounted those uh, wolves or cats on either standard or musician so I would be right or you would be right to put either one of those heads on either one of your musicians or, or standard bears. Okay, so don't uh, don't worry too much about it. That's what I'm saying. All right, there's the uh, centurion heads going on there for good. Good. Okay, so but I'm going to put the wolf on the standard. Wolf on the standard. Looks like a big, huge head. <laughs> big, huge head. All right, now let's put the cat on the musician. Somebody's mowing their lawn outside, so I don't know if you can hear that. There we go, cat on the musician. All right, guys, so I've got my heads all trimmed and put in a big pile. What I'm going to do is just start gluing them on there. And as soon as I get that done, I'll be right back. All right, guys, now I just want to kind of show you a little bit how I'm progressing. Uh, I went ahead and glued all their heads on. That's still drying. Okay, and while that's drying, I went ahead and cut the shields off of the sprues right I cut these off of here because I wanted to keep them on the sprue and uh, they're connected to the sprue by three corners right you got two here and one there well I went ahead and cut those two pieces off leaving them connected to the sprue by only one little attachment and I left it enough of the sprue that when I set it down the shields will not be touching my the table when I'm you know that I'm spraying it on so that I can go ahead and prime both sides uh, without it sticking to anything right okay so right uh, so I cut all those out and they, these are just basically waiting to be primed because I'm gonna prime them just like that and then uh, I went ahead and cut the two small shields out because I figured that I don't need to leave these on the sprue I can put them with the musician and the standard bearer because they're small enough that I would be able to paint around them with no problem at all. So I'm just going to get the little trailing pieces off of these. Uh, that's already done. You know, the mold lines and stuff. That looks good. And that looks good. Okay, now I think I've got enough shields to cover all 24 models, right? No, wait. Yeah, I've got enough shields to cover all 24 of these models with the large shield, but I don't know if I want to do that. 
You know, I, th I think the musician and the standard bearer, they probably don't even have any shields, but I'm going to give them the small shields. And I'll just have two extra shields. You can always put in the supply dump or something. Okay, now another thing, you got the wolf pelt back. Uh, I need to glue that on. I totally almost forgot that. Okay, got all the mold lines off of the little wolf pelt piece that goes on the back. And then I've got these greaves, right, for the legs. Uh, I'm going to put them on the officer. The centurion is going to have greaves. Now these greaves, the, the part that goes around the ankle, really needs some trimming because of the way the sprue sat, the uh, clippers couldn't get into the side of the greaves. So that's why it's good to have a sharp X-Acto knife. Get down into those little nooks and crannies. It's going to be glued on his leg. You're never going to see that, but you got to clean it out so that it can get close to his leg because it's pretty big in there. Okay. And then after that, the only thing left to do is to cut out the pouches and glue those on. Pretty good. Okay, a little bit more on the inside here. Okay, those look pretty good. Now, where's my leader type? Here he is. He doesn't have any greaves on his legs. As per his rank befits. None of these guys have greaves. This guy's about to have some greaves. Okay, so here we go. No greaves. I'm going to put a drop close to the top of his booty, his sandal, and his knee. And I put way too much. Okay. Okay, got glue on that greave, now I can put it on the other leg. There we go. Now let's get that second greave, put it on this first leg. I don't know why they just didn't model the greave on his leg. They did that with the phalangites. Because they all have greaves. Maybe grieving is an option. <laughs> Not a requirement, but... In my army, he's going to have to have a grieve. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. I don't know if you can see that in the focus. Oh, my thumb's in the way. But he's got some greaves. Okay, so we're going to set him off to the side. Because he's going to be using one of the bigger shields. But the wolf pelt. Where's wolf? Wolf, wolf, wolf. Wolf, 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 wolf. Okay, this is the wolf guy. Wolf man. So we take the wolf pelt and we would put it on his back. So a little drop of glue on his back where the wolf pelt will go. It's kind of form fitting to his back, which is pretty cool. Yeah, look at that. That looks pretty cool. It's hanging down. Looks like it might be part of that wolf helmet. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Set that off to the side just for a second. Grab the musician. And we're going to put some glue on his fist because the Romans have this center boss shields. They have these shields that have the boss right there in the center and the grip is in the center. It's not like medieval shields that had grips at the top and the bottom. Or, you know, nothing wrapped around your arm or whatever. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. His hand is holding the grip on the inside. Oh, you can't really see that. Nice. Okay. Set that back off. And go back to the musician. Where are you? Oh, that is a musician. I mean, stand over here. Here it is. Put a little drop of glue on his fist as well. Give him a little tiny little center boss brown shield as well. Just like so. Okay, so we're going to set that off to the side. There's now the pouches. I don't know who's supposed to be carrying the pouches. I think it's just a random. Just give everybody a pouch or something. Yeah, a belt a belt pouch. So let me cut these belt pouches out, and then I'll be back in just a minute. All right, guys, I just came to a realization that those aren't belt pouches. Those are sling ammunition pouches. Uh, if I was to put a slinger arm on a guy, then I would need to give him a sling ammunition pouch as well. And uh, so that's not everybody's going to be carrying a one of those. So I'm just going to leave those alone, save the heads, save the slings and the sling pouches, and uh, put these away. And then these guys are pretty much ready to be primed because I'm not gluing the shields on until after I start painting them. And they're pretty much finished painted. And then I will glue the shields on and finish painting the shields. But in the meantime, I will be priming the shields. Uh, we can do that as well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give this time to dry, maybe 5-10 minutes, because that's all that glue needs to dry. And then we're going to prime the hell out of them. And, no, we're not. No, we're not. Back up. Back up. I am all over the place. Sorry. Forgot about these. Okay, here we go. We're going to popsicle stick the shit out of these guys. Okay, let me go ahead and get some of this glue residue off of here. I got like uh, Charlotte's Web happening. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and let me kind of push these off to the side a little bit. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our white glue. This is what I use. I use white glue. I've seen people use other types of glue for this situation, but white glue holds them good enough, and then when you prime them, that holds them on as well. And then when you get ready to take them off, you just go pop, pop, pop. They just pop right off. And there's no need for any kind of like glue release or any kind of cutting or struggling. And I usually put these on the ends and then equidistant down the center here. Okay. For, all that is is just four drops of paint. And then... You just glue those bad boys on because the glue is it's Elmer's and it'll just pop, it'll allow you to once you're done painting them to just pop it right off. There you go. Now that does take a good five to ten minutes to dry before you want to start priming. Yeah, let's put the uh, leadership whoa that one's sliding around okay that's fine we 
remember I got enough sticks to do four figures per stick which basically equates to a base All right, so let me get these glued up, and then once it dries, I'll go out and prime it. I'll bring it back. We'll show them off. See you then. All right, guys, I am back. I've gone ahead, and I have primed these. And I and funny story is, I use I used a um, a primer that when I was spraying it. It was exactly the same color as the sprues. <laughs> so I was like, what am I, 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 I couldn't tell what was primed and what wasn't primed because the sprues were exactly the same color. So, but that's okay. I, I, I pretty much made sure everything was covered and everything's good to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these up and you can kind of take a look at them individually before we end this video because I just wanted to show you that these were primed. Now I'm keeping the shield separate, as you know, because I'm going to be doing uh, those last or those separately from the bodies and all that jazz and good stuff. And I don't know if my camera is set up to do a really good zoom. It does not look like it is. So what I need to do is adjust that. Alright guys, so <clears throat> it looks like we can get them up nice and close so you can see them. And I'm shaking all over the place like... Rrr can't see what's going on so let me get closer and you can take a look look at the detail you got the chain mail the sword the arm the faces look really good I like the feet uh, okay we're gonna we're gonna kind of scroll through these and kind of see them okay Kind of leaning forward. Might be too. Oh, I bumped into the camera. He was way too close. <clears throat> Flip them. Backside. Lorica. Chainmail. Nice belt. Dagger. Sword. Some of these guys still have swords in their sheaths, right? So, what are they carrying? Two swords? Yeah, that's not right. All right, so let's take a look at the next guys. They're all going to look fairly similar. They should, because they're all kind of reproductions of each other. But you can see, like, that guy's got his sword up, pointing down, you know. Can't wait to start painting these guys gonna be easy there's like only three colors or whatever what are you gonna do you know flesh red undershirt armor I'm done <laughs> okay now this is the command uh, base so it's gonna look a little bit let's get closer there we go focus focus so this guy's just walking around with a sword getting ready to stab you in the throat Look at that helmet. That looks kind of like a Greek style helmet, you know? I like it though. I like it. And he's got his greaves. There you go. He got the greaves on this guy. General Grievous. And then there's the guy with the cat. Yeah. Look at that. Brown shield. Paws wrapped around the tide. And this guy, too close, this guy has the wolf. Man, what am I doing? And he's also got the standard. Alrighty, and the back side, the wolf pelt. <clears throat> He's got also the pelt hanging down his back, right? 
and then this guy doesn't. He just has a cat in a hat, or hat cat, cat hat. Leader, his belt's a little bit different. Oh, he's got a little, yeah. Even though that's not the leader body, it might, might have done. That might be just one out of five. Well, one out of four will have that. Okay. Let me go kind of speed through these guys. See, I put some of the heads facing left or right. Kind of taking a look at the belts. I want to see if I see any more belts like that officer belt. There's one. See, uh, oh, there's a couple of them. Yeah, there's only like four poses. So to make the poses different, you gotta, well, you gotta position the arms and the heads differently to make them look like they're in multiple poses. On the camera, I can see that this guy's got a little fuzz. That's going. Yep. <clears throat> Last but not least, here we go. Look at that guy. Ah! Or what is he saying? He's probably just saying. Oh, look at the belt. Oh, it's tied. I love that. His belt's tucked as well. He's got it tied off to the side, though. That's cool. He's got it, got it tied in the front. And this guy's got his belt tied on the side it's still tucked like that i like it man the littlest things man really impress me makes me happy makes me happy there we go okay last thing i'm going to say before i close down this video now this is only one of many videos we're going to do some painting videos and then basing videos and things like that um, i'm going to try a new technique uh, when i go to paint these models of course, I'm going to paint all of them, right? And it's blurry now, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint all the models. Uh, but I'm not going to, well, I am going to record it all. I'm going to record it all. But I'm going to edit out everything except that guy. I'm going to paint, I'm going to paint this guy as well as all these other ones. But every time I get whatever color I'm doing, whenever I get to this model, then I will protect then I'll basically emphasize it, record it, and talk about it. And then I'm going to edit out or delete all this stuff, all the video of me painting all these other ones. So what you'll wind up getting is, hopefully, a video of me just painting this one model, even though I'm painting it at the same time I'm painting all these other ones. I'm going to try that. I'm going to see if that works out for me. Uh, if it does, then I'm going to continue doing that with some of the other models I'm doing, World War II... Napoleonics, Medievals, Ancients, American War of Independence, whatever. But this one model right here, the officer, I'm going to paint him on camera. I'm going to paint all of them on camera, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna, I'm just, the camera's going to run while I'm painting. Oh, this is kind of still sticky. Um, I can't start painting just yet, but I might be able to get started tonight. Um, if not, I'll definitely start painting tomorrow night. Or this weekend because uh, yeah I should have some free time to paint this weekend so I'm gonna knock these bad boys out I'm gonna get them
All right, so thanks for coming out and checking out this video, and be sure to check out the future videos of the Roman Legionaries, and I'll catch you next time.